Welcome back to H3 Weapon Deep Dive. Today we are looking at the L85A2. It's green and black, but green. Home SMG rifle, assault rifle, L85A2. We took Stenag magazines in this sucker, so we got lots of varieties to choose from. Uh, link in the description to the video all about Stenag mags. 5.56x45, of course. And it's bullpup. Bullets go back here behind the pistol grip. What else we got? Well, let me just, uh, let me just show you. Let's check it out. Let's take a look at the controls on the L85. Here's your mag well, because this is a bullpup. It's in the back. Stanag mags will go in there, no problem. What else do we got? Where's our charging handle? It's on the right-hand side. It's this big chunky thing here. And we got a dust cover. So if you click on the dust cover, there it goes. It will engage. It will engage and disengage. It's not there. Ah, oh, I see what it is. You got to click on the bottom part. You got to click down here. There we go. There's your bolt. No problem there. Right on the trackpad will hold the bolt back. If you hold hold right on the trackpad while pulling the bolt back, it'll hold it open. Up on the trackpad will release it. I said up on the trackpad will release it. There it goes. Ah. Uh, just like the real L85. <laughs> yes, the bolt will hold open on empty. Down on the trackpad will not eject the magazine. You gotta pull it manually. Boo. Insert a new one. There is a bolt release button, and it took me a while to find it. It is that thing right next to the selector switch, which is gonna be a mess. There we go. Don't need to press anything on your controller. Just get it near that, and it will close that bolt if it's locked open. Here is your selector switch. Left on the trackpad will switch between safe and, and fire, and the back switch is for semi in the up position and full auto in the down position. You got semi, full auto, and left on the trackpad will go between safe and fire. Let's look at attachments. Oh, I see a rail there. There is hope. There is hope. So this has got the cool thing where, well, I think it's cool. If you put some rail attachment near this top rail, it will delete the iron sights. So you can put whatever pick rail optics you want on this guy. It's just not really that obvious. So there you go. You can get whatever sights you want on it that way. It's also got this bottom rail. So you can put a foregrip on it if you'd like. Let's see if it's got any hidden side rails. Nope. Can I put a foregrip? Ah, you can put a foregrip on the top there too if you want. All right, moving on. Let's see what will fit on the end of this barrel. Muzzle brake will go. Suppressor will go. Thank goodness. Barrel extension. Yeah, that'll go. How about rail adapter? Yeah, that'll go. Okay, all important battle spatula. Yes, that will go. Custom bayonet. Uh, no custom bayonets for this guy. Not a whole lot of room in there anyway. Uh, wibbly bits? No wibbly bits. Oh well. The stock is not adjustable in any way, shape, or form, so it better be the right size because that's all you're going to get. Let's look at the iron sights that it comes with. What do we got here? Well, that is a gigantic front post assembly thingy doodle. Does it fold? No, it does not fold. Do these adjust? Ah, yes, there are two different apertures to choose from. It starts on this smaller one, actually, this one here. And boy, does that stock... <laughs> Basically, my shoulder is here. This stock is kind of weird. You would think it would be like that or something, but no, it it's like this. It doesn't stop till here. So, yeah, it gets right up in your face. But it's actually quite good because that front post is thick enough. It's nice and easy to see. It is a little odd that you've got vertical things here and round things in the back. That's kind of weird, but it works. This larger aperture is, is it's too big. So I would not bother adjusting it. I just leave it with this one, which is actually how it comes out of the spawner. That one's just fine. And if we put a red dot on it, red dot gets pretty well up over that front sight because the front sight gets deleted. It's just a little nub in there. It's a little bit low. 
but it works quite well. And let's see what it looks like with a SUSAT scope on there. Ah, well, the nice thing is this is on a rail, so I can move it forward and get it out of my eye hole. There we go. Where is it shooting? Very low. Okay, is it adjustable? Well, this is an add-on, but it is adjustable from 100 to 600 in 100 meter increments. So that's kind of neat. There's your SUSAT scope. Recoil test. 30 rounds of 556 by 45 NATO. Let's see how we do. Hmm, pretty squirrely there. 8.5, not bad, but yeah, all the way out to the 7 ring. So that was a little, little disappointing there. Let's try with a muzzle break. Boy, this is drifty as all get out. See, look at that. It starts out great. Drifts, comes back. <laughs> Drifts again. Oh, it's all over. 8.9 average. Numerically not so bad, but that is an ugly pattern. And finally, the suppressor. Mm, that looked a lot better. Yeah, 9.43. Now we're talking. So the suppressor got it done on that run. Got on that in the 8 ring. But much, much more consistent. Strange. There you have it. The L85 in green. <laughs> Bullpup style. Not so bad in H3. Uh, I wish it had better recoil, but I wish everything had a better recoil. <laughs> Till next time. I will see ya. Yeah, just keep bursting it. Sad 977, just keep bursting it. It's fine.